Jigs have always played an important role in Irish traditional music. They're lively, usually accompanied by dance. You might hear them on an overcast day walking down a Dublin street or in a warm pub where the chocolatey notes of Guinness hang in the air. But jigs were typically written and performed with traditional Irish instruments in mind, like this fiddle recording of I Will If I Can by legendary Irish musician Patrick O'Keefe. But what if you performed it on the clarinet? The clarinet and Irish traditional music are an unlikely pairing, but they're one that Bernadette John says fits perfectly together. I'm kind of taking Irish traditional tunes that you might hear in a pub at a session or something, and I'm kind of learning how to adapt that for clarinet, because obviously clarinet is not really part of the Irish tradition. Typically you'd see fiddles and illin pipes. Clarinet's kind of a, a new one. There's not really too many people doing that sort of thing, but I think it can fit really, really well. The sound is very adaptable, I think. In this episode of the Austin P. Experience podcast, we sat down with Bernadette, an Austin P. graduate and Fulbright student who's currently studying in Ireland on how the unlikely pairing works. Hi, everyone. I am here with Bernadette John, Austin P.'s second ever a Fulbright scholar. She's going to tell us a little bit about her time in Ireland. Uh, Bernadette, tell us a little bit about uh, being a Fulbright scholar and how that happened. Yeah, um, so I think it was Dr. Pruitt actually that her originally told me about the Fulbright. I had never heard of it before. And he had said, like, I think this would be something that you might be interested in or like you might have a chance at getting. So you should look into this. And so I did. And I, I thought it was really cool. And I've kind of been interested in combining my love of clarinet and Ireland for a long time. It's something I've been interested in for a long time. So I kind of just mashed it all together in this like Fulbright world and created this whole application and sent it in and now I'm here and I can barely believe it. I like still am on cloud nine about it. So (laughs) tell us where you are right now. Yeah, I'm in Dublin, Ireland, actually, (laughs) like five minutes from the Guinness factory. So very in the heart. (laughs) That's awesome. So how long have you been there? I've been here like five weeks, I think now, maybe a little over a month. And how long will you be there? I'll be here till June, so I still have a decent amount of time left. (laughs) Awesome. Um, So can you tell uh, our listeners a little bit about you as a musician? Yeah, um, so I've played clarinet since I was 10 years old, forever. Um, I only have like one friendship that's longer than me playing clarinet. Like that's why I always say it's like one of my longest friends. (laughs) Um, So I've played since I was 10 years old and it's taken me to absolutely amazing places. Like I never thought when I joined band in the fifth grade that I would come this far. I, I didn't join thinking I was going to go into music, but here I am. And it's, it's been the most amazing thing of my life. It's opened so many opportunities for me. Um, so I play clarinet all this time. And, um, just a couple of years ago, I also started playing fiddle more so for fun rather than formal study. Um, so yeah, it's really everything in my life kind of just revolves around music in the best way. I, it's great. (laughs) I love that. Um, what does it mean for you to be chosen as a Fulbright scholar? Oh my gosh. I honestly, I'm still, like I said, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whole situation because I, it doesn't even feel real sometimes. Like sometimes I just walk down the street and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I actually am here. Like I, I got on a plane and I, with my four suitcases and I did this, (laughs) um, I, to me, it's just completely overwhelming, and I'm so, so grateful. Like, I literally wake up every day here, even if it's raining, even if it's cloudy, like it normally is. <laughs> um, I just am so grateful. It is so, so amazing to be here. So, I know a little bit about your story, but our listeners don't. Um, can you talk about your family connection to Ireland? Yeah, um, so part of the whole reason I'm even interested in Irish music or Irish culture or anything is because I grew up Irish American. My great grandparents, multiple sets of great grandparents, um, immigrated to the United States a little less than 100 years ago. And they came mostly from County Galway in Ireland. Um, We have some family in other counties as well. But the great grandparents that I feel most connected to are my great grandparents, Michael and Nora. They were from the very west coast of Ireland in Galway. And their story is just so inspiring to me. And it's really a huge reason why I'm here and why I love Irish culture and music and everything so much. 
Um, they both sailed on a ship. They left Ireland because they had nothing here. They were so poor. They didn't feel like they had any chance of success in life here. Um, they didn't know each other here in Ireland, even though they were both from Galway. They met in the U.S., in New York City. But my great-grandmother, Nora, she's the one that named me. And she left Ireland with nothing but the clothes on her back and two pairs of underwear. Like, she had nothing else with her. She didn't know anyone in the U.S. She traveled alone. She was, like, 20 years old. Um, so to be here when they had to leave Ireland, they felt that they didn't have a choice. They had nothing. They were so poor. And then the fact that I'm here by choice, doing something that I love is just the most amazing full circle moment for me and my family. So it's been crazy. That's, that's wonderful. What is the importance of Irish music and storytelling to you and your family? Um, I think in terms of just Irish culture, that's how a lot of stories get passed down through time is through their music. Um, Irish history in general is I would say typically more sad than not. There's been a lot of um, tumultuous time in Irish history and the music is kind of what keeps people together. It's what holds communities together. It's how teachers teach their students. It's how parents teach their kids. It's how the history stays alive. Um, so it's just, just really ingrained in the culture here, which is very different, I think, than the U.S. and what I've experienced in the U.S. Like, it's not uncommon. I actually just last week, I was at the grocery store across the street and there was just a woman like singing along, one of the workers at the store. And she was just singing along to like whatever song was playing at the grocery store. And she was so loud, like she was singing so loud, but she was so happy. And it brought such a smile to my face, even though like that would never happen in the US. Like I feel like people just are very private. They're very individual in their lives and they like would never do that in public, I feel like. But she was just singing, like she didn't care who heard. And it was like, it literally brought so much joy to my face. Like it was crazy. <laughs> That's so sweet. What is your goal while you're in Ireland? Um, At least professionally, my goal is to kind of approach clarinet in maybe a different way. Um, I'm already finding that just the freedom of the music is helping my classical clarinet playing a lot. And it's just a completely new way of approaching an instrument that I've played for so long, which is really amazing that I get to kind of rework my thinking on that. And then just personally, just experiencing, you know, the place that I come from or my family comes from um, and just getting to, you know, really be engrossed in the music and the culture and the language and everything. It's kind of just, it feels very, um, wonderful for the personal development side of things too. Right. So um, are you bringing Irish influences to contemporary clarinet? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the goal. So currently I'm kind of taking Irish traditional tunes that you might hear in a pub at a session or something. And I'm kind of learning how to adapt that for clarinet because obviously clarinet is not really part of the Irish tradition. Typically you'd see fiddles and illin pipes and whistles and other things but um clarinet's kind of a, a new one there's not really too many people doing that sort of thing but i think it can fit really really well the sound is um very adaptable i think of a clarinet to the tradition so i'm really just kind of figuring out how i might be able to adapt some of the techniques that the irish trad instruments use and how i can Put that on clarinet so i've joined um, a trad group i go on monday nights and we just play and i meet with them beforehand so we go over some tunes and we just try and like figure out how do i replicate the sound you're making on this instrument how can i attempt that on mine or how can i make the style a little bit closer to what you're doing so it's really really cool i'm having a lot of fun it sounds very challenging yeah, it's a lot harder, I think, than I thought. Like, I was like, oh, like, I've played this instrument so long, like, I'll be able to figure out no problem. But it's a whole other world. They learn tunes so differently than we would in classical music. Like, they don't use sheet music like we would that I've used for, you know, all my life playing the instrument. So they can just hear a tune once or twice, and they can just play it, like, off the top of their head. They don't need sheet music. They don't need formal coaching or anything, they can just pull it out. <laughs> and I just can't do it. Like I'm struggling so bad, but I think it's really worth it. Like, you know, it's very humbling, <laughs> but um, I think it's a great experience, so. What does it sound like? 
Um, I think clarinet fits very, very well. And actually a couple of them have said the same, a couple of the teachers. They're like, I, this is actually like really, like it fits very well. The timbre is just really, really nice in Irish traditional music. Um, so I think it's really, I don't, I think it's a new sound, but I don't think it's maybe off-putting. Uh, probably the like very, you know, trad heavy people, the the purists would probably say, oh, we, we could never, we never, we don't want this ever. Um, but I think the people that are maybe more open to it, I, I think it's a cool sound and I think they like it so far, so. That's so fun and so different. Mm -hmm. So um, it says here that you're studying with Dr. Paul Rowe, who is a world renowned clarinetist. Can you tell us about him and what it's like working with him? Yeah, he's been really, really great. He is um, very free, I would say. He very much looks at you as a whole person rather than like you are only a musician in my room for an hour a week or whatever. Um, like he very much wants to know how you as a person are doing, what you're doing in your free time, you know, what you enjoyed this week, what you had troubles with. Um, so it's really nice to be working with somebody that cares so much about me as a person as well as a musician. So it's been really great to form that kind of relationship with him. What does he mean um, in regards to Irish contemporary music? Um, he performs a lot. He's involved in a lot of kind of contemporary um, groups and he has a lot of professional relationships with contemporary musicians. So he does some of this kind of trad stuff, which is originally how I found him. Um, but he also does all kinds of things. He, I think over the summer did a retreat in uh, Norway, maybe that was like a gathering of all kinds of artists, like visual artists, musicians, um, just dancers, I think it's like a whole mix. So he's very into kind of this cutting edge, you know, brand new kind of sound worlds and like artistic worlds. Very cool. So he mentioned his eagerness to work with you to discover artistic insights. What does that mean to you? Um, I think that so far we've really had a great collaboration. So it's like I'm learning from him, but he's also learning from me because neither of us are like true experts in this area. It's like very new. Um, so it's like, you know, we talk about some things in our lesson and try things in our lessons. And then I go to trad group that week and I maybe learn something else. And so then I go back next week and then I share that and we kind of, you know, work through it. And it's just really, really cool. We're just, it's a big part up. of collaboration. Yeah. Very cool. So what are your goals and hopes for the upcoming year? Um, in terms of like the professional world, um, I actually applied to do like a workshop at our 2024 clarinet fest, which is like the big conference for clarinetists around the world. And it's actually being held in Dublin this year. So I'm like hoping, I mean, I sent my application. I, I think it's a great application, so I hope it goes through, but, um, so I applied to present there. And so I'm hoping to present all of this that I'm working on and kind of, you know, maybe take some tunes to, typically classical clarinetists and say, here's what I've done. Here's some tunes we can look at. Here's, you know, the method that I use that I found most successful. If you're also interested in doing this kind of Irish trad sort of thing, like here's how you might approach it. Here are some things I found um, and kind of just a culmination of everything I've learned. Um, in terms of personal, I just hope to keep exploring. I try and go every week to like explore something new. Um, just yesterday I went to the National Gallery of Ireland and just looked like went through all the rooms and saw all these paintings and stuff. Um, so I'm trying to just get out and explore as much as possible. Um, we have a, a reading week next week, which is kind of like a week off, kind of sort of. You're supposed to be reading and like studying, but I'm going on a trip. Um, so I'm actually, my friend from the U.S. is coming, so we're doing a mini road trip, and um, I'm going to go try and meet my family in Galway, so. That is awesome. Have you met them yeah. before? I have not met them before. My mom and my aunts and my grandma have all met them before, but I did not come with them on that trip because I was in high school still, um, so I couldn't get out of school for it, but um, they have all met them before, and I, like, know where their house is and everything, so I'm hoping that Maybe I can stop in a pub and they can like text them and say, hey, like there's someone here to meet you. Like I hate to just show up and knock on their door, but <laughs> if I have to, I will. That's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so lastly, um, can you tell our listeners what the Fulbright means to you? 
Oh, I think Fulbright in general just represents an opportunity to pursue anything you've ever dreamed of. Um, it's really interesting because you can basically propose anything in your application. There's not really a set thing or like a set degree you have to go after. Like I'm not going after a, a formal degree. I'm, I propose to study like privately with Dr. Rowe. Um, so it's like anything you can dream up. And if you can make a compelling case to, you know, go and do whatever you want to do in whatever country you want to do it in. And, you know, if you have solid reasoning behind that, it's like the world is open to you because of that. So, yeah, I just, I don't know. Anyone that's even interested in Fulbright, like, I would say go for it. Feel free if, I don't know if there's a way to get my contact information somewhere, but I'd be happy to talk to anybody interested in Ireland or Fulbright in general. Like, it's, it's really cool, a really cool program. That's wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Absolutely. We can we can definitely get that in there somewhere. Um, well, thank you so much, Bernadette. Uh, we wish you luck for the rest of your time in Ireland. Thank you.